sometimes we need to identify objects, like we've seen now. But we also need to plan a safe route, and this brings me to the next talk. Uh, Jorge Cabrera Gámez, this is correctly spelled, but something like that, uh, will uh, present us his uh, contribution entitled Optimization Based Weather Routing uh, for Robotics for Safety. Thanks. <coughs> okay, thank you very much. Uh, uh, I will present work done in Gran Canaria with the colleagues at the uh, Instituto de Sistemas Inteligentes y Aplicaciones Numéricas en Ingeniería. The outline of my talk will be the following. We will present a deterministic weather route planning for sailing boats suitable for areas where high quality wind and current forecasts are available. This is an optimization, uh, optimization based approach in, in which um, the objective function at this moment is to minimize the time required to arrive at destination. We will present some simulations. We don't have a real sailboat. And um, for that, we will use um, high quality uh, wind and current forecast obtained from Hirland and Myosem models. Oh, sorry. Uh, basically, the contents of the talk will be a short introduction. Uh, we'll present the basics of the route planner. Um, we will present the characteristics, the feature of uh, the forecast, and then go into simulation results, conclusions, and um, future work. Um, regarding the problem of uh, weather route planning for sailing, it could be a state of follow. Um, given a wind and current map, let's say forecast most of the time, a sailboat model defined by its polar data diagram, uh, a starting point and a destination point, the problem is to find a route that minimizes an adjective function. Um, that could be the time required to arrive to destination, but it could be also, for example, to minimize the energy, okay? To go from the starting point to the destination. Uh, methods used to solve this problem can be uh, basically grouped into two main approaches. Those called deterministic methods, in which you really trust in your forecast, you normally have one map, for wind and one map for current, uh, probably uh, with uh, hourly predictions on, for some uh, time gap ahead. And, but also, uh, there are also some methods uh, that uh, use ensemble of uncertainty uh, forecast. We call them uh, probabilistic methods. In this talk, we will concentrate on deterministic methods. For deterministic methods, uh, we can find in the literature uh, that uh, uh, many authors have to use uh, or have applied to this, to this domain uh, classical artificial intelligence graph search methods like the A star, T star, D star, D star, etc. But uh, in our opinion, this method has uh, have two two main difficulties. First. Uh, because they are graph search methods, you are obliged to discretize your space and also your uh, angles, you know, your possible periods for searching. But also, uh, perhaps uh, more important from the theoretical, theoretical point of view, is optimality. This uh, method, in a start from sample, which is quite popular, uh, it provides you uh, the warranty that uh, the uh, the route you find is optimal, but it is true as long as the problem is a constant time, a constant uh, cost problem. But uh, in this case, this uh, property does not hold because currents and wind change over time. This uh, work is basically an adaptation that we have done since. Uh, 
2009 in uh, glider for uh, in, excuse me for in past planning for glider mission. Uh, the root planner is uh, has uh, this basically this architecture. On top, <coughs> we there is a, a non-linear and constrained search that uses um, a bearing selection algorithm that we'll discuss in brief. And on bottom, the simulation is about the, the, the search uh, is uh, also sustained or based on a simulation. We take into account winds in the bearing selection algorithm and currents during the simulation as by side products. Also, we fed the, um, the um, route planner uh, with wind and current forecast, and we also, as we will show in a minute, we have to state the problem, set some, some, some parameters, and define an initial route. Basically, the algorithm is uh, first we have to choose the maximum number of intermediate points, waypoints, to be used at the, yeah, and the precision radius. We have to set up the size of the searching area, means uh, how much do you allow the um, uh, optimization algorithm to move your the initial location of your waypoints. Uh, we have to choose a time step for simulating the sailboat motion, <coughs> and we have to also to propose to um, to offer to fed it with uh, an initial approximation for the route. It can be provided by by many many methods, many many ways, and then. We can run an unconstrained non-linear search of a possible localization of the intermediate waypoints with the objective of minimizing the time to miss the destination. Uh, in fact, this procedure is iterated from zero to the maximum number of intermediate waypoints, and uh, only the best results, I mean, for uh, obtain with uh, waypoints in time is uh, returned. Basically. For the bearing selection algorithm, we used the, the algorithm proposed by Telser and Kroll in 2008 in Autonomous Robot. And probably you, most of you know it. Basically, what it tries to do is to find the instantaneous uh, velocity made good that maximizes the, the speed of the boat in the direction to the, to the target. Okay? It uses uh, this uh, polar diagram that we have also use it in our simulations. Uh, perhaps you recall from previous slide that we don't solve or we don't search for or we don't take into account the effect of currents at the bearing um, uh, selection algorithm because in this algorithm if you take into account the currents uh, it really cancels when you mm, try to find the maximum, okay? Uh, as it's shown in the in the slide. I mean, in this slide, uh, you have to the first select, the first row. Well, well, yes, I think it's clear. Um, the first row, you have to select. Uh, you have the, the the speed depending on the possible bearing denoted here by theta and add it actually to the current speed. If you project that speed in the direction of your uh, target point, which is denoted by the versor U, D, and you expand that uh, expression, you see that uh, the projection of currents uh, in, the in your direction of your target is a common term that you add to every velocity that you see from the, your polar diagram. So it adds nothing when you, add, you make a, a maximum selection. Okay? About forecast. Uh, for wind forecasts, we use a high, high resolution forecast provided by the Spanish Meteorological Agency, EMET. And they use a headland model that produce, provides one analysis and 12 forecasts separated by a three hours period, so you get an, on, on full 36 hour prediction. It, they up, the, the agency updates the forecast every six hours, and so the resolution is um, about 
0.05 degrees resolution in latitude and longitude. For current uh, forecast, uh, um, we use uh, forecast provided by MyOcean and for the EV domain, and also from the Spanish Harbor Authority, with a, they run their own mo um, their own model, a regional oceanic oceanic model called SEOCAN. The resolution is similar to the to the wind uh, current, and uh, in this case you you are you have you, you are provided with a 72 hours uh, forecast with hourly predictions. Um, in what follows, uh, I will show a simulation result, but I want to call your attention to the. Um, the arrows and color used in the simulation to keep it uh, clear enough. Uh, we, in the simulation, we have uh, use of uh, step integration, time step integration of um, 120 seconds, two minutes. Uh, the precision radius is uh, about two kilometers for intermediate uh, waypoints. And um, for wind field and current field, you have those. Um, uh, color case. Just to give an impression of uh, the power of the computational demands of this approach of the, that the root planet poses, on a similar, on a typical problem that uh, we will show here for a um, simulation of uh, staying for about 20 hours using uh, a good laptop uh, i7 quad core computer, it takes about five to six minutes. Okay? I will try to run. Uh, <coughs> this is the first simulation. Okay. In in this simulation, we are comparing uh, what we call direct to goal approach to the optimization um, uh, or to the route proposed by the optimization uh, method. With in this case, we are not using the currents at all. Okay. Uh, you see the. And the direct uh, to goal approach is basically applying Roland's algorithm continuously. Okay, that's uh, basically the idea. Uh, I must say that uh, in this field, for example, all the arrows is they are just for 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 winds, not not currents. Okay, I will try to speed up. This is the second different case. Uh, you see in the Canaries during summer, trade winds are very, very important. And you will see that uh, the speed of the simulated vessels now, uh, speed that accelerates is increased when they cross the channel. Also, windward of the islands, uh, Tenerife, for example, is about nearly 4,000 meters, so the, the island effect is very, very important, and you normally get a vortex on um, wind one. In this case, now you will see that uh, we have added current. It's basically the same problem or the same situation I showed in the first run. Okay. We have downsampled the wind field just to keep it somehow more clear. We want the islands. Uh, uh, you have a vortex, so wind field is normally weak, not well, not constant, and uh, it is uh, suffer or is, uh, I mean, evident in the simulation. And uh, uh, this is basically the same. I think we can skip this one to hurry up if I can. And finally, the last simulation, just to show one of the capabilities we have achieved with the. Uh, root planet is that we can't uh, because in the, simul in the optimization uh, pr um, stage 
we can move the intermediate waypoint. We can very easily to achieve the capability of uh, making root planner with uh, island, let's say, obstacle avoidance. Okay, this is a classical regatta uh, between Gran Canaria, this island, and uh, Lanzarote. And finally, the conclusions. Uh, what we have presented is a simple optimization-based deterministic sailboat route planner that does not require position or period discretizations. In simulation, that is what we have done at the moment, it improves the result obtained using a direct-to-goal strategy. It is capable of finding routes avoiding obstacles, and uh, it could be, I mean, the planner, uh, recommended when you have at hand winds and currents uh, that are variable in time and space, typically when your route is, uh, expands over long distance, uh, or in the case where a direct route does not exist. For future work, we would like to use a more realistic kinematical model of the table in simulation that will take into account the leeway effect or the cost of beating, not None of those effects are taken into account now. Uh, we would like to compare it, the, the result with other free tools that uh, allow for route planning like a VR tool. Um, we would like also, uh, that's uh, uh, for us is an important point, um, I was talking uh, with someone later, inspired by, by what Jose Carlos uh, commented in his presentation, is how much do we trust the forecast? That is, uh, is, is, is a very important point because we are, this can be reduced to a numerical exercise if you don't have the chance to test or at least assign credit, confidence to what you have planned in advance. Okay? If uh, your expectation and reality don't match, nothing of this has any sense. And, um, Finally, uh, in time, some time ago, we would like to have the chance of testing this uh, with real world experiments. Um, thank you very much for your attention. Uh, thank you very much for your talk. I'm very happy that you took my algorithmic basis. <laughs> I'm even more happy that you found extensive room for improvement. Uh, are there any questions? Do you actually have a boat to go and test this on? Excuse me? Do you have a boat to actually go and test this for real? No, no not actually. But we would like to test it. Should make use of the teams here. I think there are some who could offer. I, I must say that uh, this is more interesting for long distance uh, uh, races or routes. So I think we are still a bit uh, uh, delayed to that point. I mean, uh, we, we have uh, very, very uh, good sailboats, or in robust sailboats to, to attend <coughs> something like that. So, can you go back to your last simulation? So the last one? Yeah. This one? Yeah, this one. Can you start it for a while? I will try. The large arrows are the wind, right? The last? The large the arrows. Yes, yes, right. yes, yes. These are the currents. We are interpolating, okay? Okay, but my question is, sometimes the rod is almost aligned with the... Wind. Okay, okay. <laughs> I was expecting that question. I mean, the picture or the, the video has not enough resolution to show that uh, you are beating that one. Okay, so okay. that means you should beat... Yes, 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 yes. In fact, if you will, will take into account the, the cost of beating, probably your beating lane, which is also a parameter of uh, Ronald's algorithm, should be wider. Mm. But are you considering any, I mean, beating corridor to...? Yes, uh, but it's um, now, actually I don't remember exactly the number, but it could be about uh, 
500 meters or something like that, it's quite short. If you neglect the, the maneuver costs, then it doesn't make a difference in the result. Yeah. It just, you just get uh, smoother <laughs> trajectory, but nothing else. Nice question. Yeah. Uh, when you mention again the, how much can you trust the forecast, uh, do you expect to have a kind of a stochastic model for that? Or on the other hand, do you have a No idea, really. Okay. <laughs> It's a, it's a problem that uh, we would like to tackle, mm. we would like to think about. Or maybe you have some sensitivity analysis on that, for example, if at some point a slightly change on the, on the, on the wind or the currents might, might, might make the optimization process to go, for example, around the island. Instead of, because in some spots you, have a very, you can have very high sensitivity uh, to some particular... Uh, to the First point is that I will not trust forecast near uh, shores. Point number one. Point number two. Uh, normally, uh, forecasts are quite accurate, but they are delayed or advancing time or also moving in space. Okay, that's our experience with gliders. And uh, I think that could be the way to go. I mean, so try to try to correlate with the yes on real time on the field. Yes. Try to yes. shift it somehow or to yes. I mean, spatial and temporal. Spatial, yes. yeah. spatial time. Okay. In fact, you you want to assign you, you want to match your expectations right. with your measurements. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. We'll come to the last presentation uh, in this session. Um, it's another research with 